Robert Sinstack Abbott was an American lawyer, publisher, and editor who lived from December 24, 1870 until February 29, 1940. The Chicago Defender, which Abbott launched in 1905, eventually had the biggest circulation of any Black-owned newspaper in the nation. In the early to mid-20th century, the Chicago Defender was the most significant African-American newspaper. A Black point of view that had been silent in the early 20th century was given a voice by Robert Sinstack Abbott. Black people in the American South were pushed to migrate to the North during the Great Migration. And Abbott's newspaper reported on and advocated against the brutality that defined the Jim Crow era. This is the story of Robert Sinstack Abbott. So sit back, relax, let's get into it. Robert Abbott was born to freed slave parents on December 24, 1870 in St. Simons, Georgia. When Robert was a baby, his father, Thomas Abbott, passed away. Robert's widowed mother, Flora Abbott, then fell in love with and wed John Sinstack, a man of mixed races who had just moved to the U.S. from Germany. Robert was treated as his own son by John Sinstack, who had seven other kids with Flora Abbott. In order to identify Robert as a member of the family, he was given the middle name Sinstack. John Sinstack was a publisher and a teacher who founded the Woodville Times Magazine in Woodville, Georgia, a town that Savannah, Georgia eventually acquired. John Sinstack was driven to promote the education of African American students. Robert Abbott studied printing at Hampton Institute, now Hampton University, in Virginia after attending Claflin University in Orangeburg, South Carolina. He traveled to Chicago after earning his degree from Hampton in 1896 and attended Kent College of Law, where he graduated in 1898. Robert was told he was too dark to practice law in the United States. Robert Abbott struggled to make a living as a lawyer. Abbott attempted to establish a legal practice while working in Gary, Indiana and Topeka, Kansas for a number of years. For a while, he moved back to his home in Georgia before returning to Chicago, where he could see the changes that brought about by the influx of thousands of new immigrants from the rural South. A foldable card table and a kitchen chair served as his workplace, and he set up his printing equipment in his landlady's dining room. His landlady was the driving force who encouraged him to start his newspaper. He established the Chicago Defender on May 5, 1905. The early issues of the Defender was a four-page, six-column handbills with local news pieces compiled by Abbott and the newspaper clippings throughout. Going door-to-door -door and stopping at every barbershop, pool hall, and pharmacy and church in Chicago's South Side, he managed to sell 300 copies of the four-page pamphlet. After 15 years of labor, he finally saw the newspaper turn a profit. The phrase Negro or Black were never used in the Defender. Instead, Black men and women were referred to as race men and race women, and African Americans as the race. Abbott previously promoted the anti-lynching slogan, If you must die, take at least one with you and encourage black people to strive for equality. He banned the terms colored and Negro as being disrespectful. He preferred the phrase the race. The Chicago Defender covered the 1919 Chicago riot as it broke out. Invisible barriers were crossed by Eugene Williams on a raft at a segregated beach on 29th and Lakeshore Drive. Williams drowned as a result of white beachgoers throwing rocks. Violence erupted for eight days after Williams' death. At the end of the incident, there had been 15 white and 23 black fatalities, 500 injuries, and the destruction of a thousand black residents' homes. 
Hey guys, if you like this type of content, help us out with the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. All right, let's get back to it. The three competitor publications, The Broad X, The Illinois Idea, and The Conservator, which were published in the Chicago region at the time, were quickly surpassed in local distribution by the Chicago Defender. Black people in the South read the newspaper quite a lot. Over the Mason-Dixon line, the paper was distributed by black Pullman porters and performers. Pullman porters were men hired to work for the railroads as porters on sleeping cars. Starting shortly after the American Civil War, George Pullman sought out former slaves to work on sleeping cars. Their job was to carry passengers' bags, shine shoes, set up, and maintain the sleeping berths, and serve the passengers. White distributors refused to distribute the paper. Therefore, it was bought into the South secretly. The Defender had several organizations, including the Ku Klux Klan, attempt to seize it or intimidate the readers. At churches and barbershops, the Defender was read aloud and distributed from person to person. It is estimated that at its height, each paper sold was read by four or five black Americans, putting its readership at over 500,000 people each week. The Chicago Defender was the first black newspaper to publish a health section, have a full page of comics, and have a readership of over 100,000. More than a million black people moved north as a result of the Great Northern Migration, as it was referred to in The Defender. Roughly 100,000 of them settled in Chicago. The Defender rose to prominence as one of the main advocates for the Great Migration. In the United States, the journal was selling more than 250,000 copies a week by 1929. Bud Billiken a fictitious figure Abbott developed in 1923, subsequently became a source of pride, joy, and optimism for black Chicagoans living through the Great Depression. It served as inspiration for the first Bud Billiken Parade in 1929, which went on to become the second biggest yearly parade and the oldest and largest African-American parade in the United States. On February 29, 1940, in Chicago, Abbott passed away from Bright's illness after appointing his Savannah-born nephew, John H. Sinstack, as his successor. Bright's disease is an archaic term for what is now referred to as nephritis. Nephritis is an inflammation of the kidneys caused by toxins, infection, or autoimmune conditions. Assuming editorial control, John Sinstack remained an advocate for complete equality. He established the National Negro Publishers Association that year, rising to the position of its first president. It is now called the National Newspaper Publishers Association, was founded to bring together black American newspaper publishers across the nation. The Defender, along with other African American publications, called for the military to be integrated and denounced how black troops were treated while serving in World War II. As a result of their protest, the U.S. government threatened to indict African American publishers for sedition, crime against the state. Sedition is typically restricted to the crime of organizing or promoting resistance to the government in a way such as through speech or writings. That falls short of the more serious action constituting treason, even if it may ultimately have the same results as treason. But nevertheless, John Sinstack, the publisher of The Defender, worked out a deal with the Justice Department that preserved the black press's First Amendment rights. In 1956, The Defender started publishing every day. The caliber of writers was praised. Nevertheless, with John Sinstack passing in 1997, the Defender's impact on the country waned and its circulation fell to around 20,000. 
Real Times, a firm owned by a cousin of Sinstack, purchased the newspaper in 2003. The Chicago Defender started publishing weekly five years later. 2019 saw the end of print edition of the publication, and the Chicago Defender switched to a digital-only model. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that story. Remember the landlady who encouraged him to let him set up his office in her dining room? Well, he eventually came back and bought her an eight-bedroom house. So he definitely uh, appreciated the encouragement and the help that she had, had gave him. So that's it on Robert Sinstack Abbott. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. That's it for Aggressive Intelligence. See you in the next one.